And now for the radio program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program. The mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. And I'll tell you why. It's because you know who's guilty. You see his every move. You know his complete plans, even his innermost thoughts. Yet the final curtain always brings a startling surprise. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's the whistler for the tops in entertainment. And for the tops in gasoline quality, it's Signal. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly, independent Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Bright Future. Surveying his own reflection in the glass door entrance to the apartment house, Harry Simpson was pleased with what he saw. He flicked an imaginary speck from his lapel, straightened his bow tie, tugged lightly at the snap brim of his hat. Then, slapping the folded newspaper against his leg, he entered the building. Yes, Harry Simpson had a feeling that things were beginning to break his way at last. A feeling fortified by the $137 won at last night's poker game. Nothing could stop Harry Simpson today not even the nationwide problem of a housing shortage. Uh-huh. You're the manager, fella? That's what it says over the bus that you've been leaning on. I understand you have an apartment for rent. Uh, well, yeah. Furnished? Would that make such a difference? <laughs> no. Uh, this, uh, make any difference? Mm. Oh, Ben Franklin looks pretty good in green, doesn't he? Bonus, hmm? Half of it, the other 50 goes on the first month's rent. You're, uh, not OPA. Never heard of it. Well, I guess you got yourself an apartment, mister. One thing, though. Still a couple of boxes of stuff in the place. Belongs to the last tenant. Supposed to have sent him to his wife in Kansas City. Hmm. Own something else, I think you ought to know the only reason we've got a vacant apartment is... Is that the last tenant, Frank Calder, was killed in a chemical fire last night. I know. That's how I got the address. I looked it up in the obituary. The death notice. Mm, you kind of slick, mister. Yeah, you got to use your head if you want to find a place to live these days, fella. Yes, sir. you got to use the noodle. <laughs> A few minutes later, you're alone, Harry, in your new apartment. And you congratulate yourself as you stroll from room to room. Yes, things are looking up for Harry Simpson, aren't they? The future looks bright and deep. And then a framed picture catches your eye. An enlarged photograph in color of a man and a woman. You hardly notice the man. It's the girl in the bright yellow bathing suit who attracts your attention. Tall, slender. A mass of flaming red hair falling down over tan shoulders. Wow. Then you notice something else. Along one edge of the picture frame, a thin line of green. Puzzled, you run a nail file down the side. And a moment later, a bill flutters to the floor. A scrap of currency, Harry. But it's the amount that causes your jaw to drop. It's a thousand-dollar bill. You hold the picture up again, shake it. And another bill falls to the floor. Another and another. Until a neat little pile of currency forms in the center of the room. A pile amounting to 
$35,000. Hello? Hello, this is Boyle speaking, Mr. Colton. Boyle Investigations. Who? Joe Boyle. Look, you called me a couple of weeks ago. You asked me to check on a guy named Jameson. Upstate in Denton, remember? Oh, uh, uh, Jameson, yeah. Say, this is Mr. Coulter, isn't it? Coulter? Oh, Frank is not here right now. Oh, but... not there, huh? Well, it's too bad. I ran across something I thought might interest him. It's about Jameson. Uh, look, uh, look, I'm a good friend of Frank's. Could you give me the message? Uh, yeah, yeah I guess so. Well, you see, I came down from Denton this morning. I was going to do the town for a few days. You know, bright lights, dancing girls... It does a fellow good to get away once in a while. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm walking down the street when I spot this guy, Jameson, right here in town. You tell Cola that, huh? And tell him I'll keep my eye on Jameson, just in case. All right. I'll, uh, I'll tell him. And look, in case Mr. Cola wants to reach me, I better give you my address. I'm at the Prentice Hotel, pal. It's in the book. Say, uh, what did you say your name was? I didn't, Joe. Goodbye. It's all a little puzzling, isn't it, Harry? As you replace the receiver, you turn and stare at the bills on the floor. And you wonder if the phone call had anything to do with the $35,000 you found hidden in the picture frame. You wonder, too, about this man, Jameson, and why Coulter was having him watch. Quickly, you cross the room, scoop up the bills. You can run for it now, or you can sit tight and wait. Yes, wait. That's it, isn't it, Harry? Perhaps there's more where this came from. You slip the bills into your wallet, seal the picture again, and place it on the mantel. As you step back to admire the girl in the bathing suit. Who is it? Yes, what can I... Well, well, hello. How lucky can a guy get? Mr. Mr. Simpson? That's right, honey. I, I hate to intrude like this. I'm Rosanna Robbins. I... I was Frank. That is real. Oh, sure. I remember you. What? The photograph. You're the girl in the photograph. I never forget a, a, a face. Went in. The manager didn't think you'd mind. I, I just came by to pick up some things that were left. Oh, some things, huh? But sure. <laughs> oh, no, hon. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Simpson. I didn't mean to. Well, well it's just that... Coming back here to Frank's apartment, the memories and all. Oh, sure, sure, I understand. Frank and I were very much in love. It doesn't seem possible he's gone. Now all I have left is the memory of our love and that. Oh, that uh, picture on the mantel, huh? Yes. It's the only one I have of him. I had to come back for it. I, I wouldn't want her to see it. Her? Uh, Frank's wife, they've been separated for years. I wouldn't want her to know about us. I think it's best this way now that he's gone. Yes, I'm sure. Well, she wouldn't understand. No, 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 she wouldn't. Uh, may I look at that picture again? I'm afraid I didn't get a very close look at him the uh, last time. Uh, well, it was taken on the beach last summer. Yeah. Oh. Looks like a grade-A guy. Oh, he was, Mr. Simpson, he was. I, I miss him so very much. I just don't know what I'll do now. Well, nothing rash, I guess. I hope. Well, perhaps I... Oh, here I am boring you, Mr. Simpson. I, I think I'd better go. Well, it's the hurry. I, I do hope you'll forgive me for intruding. Any time, honey. I want that uh, picture wrapped. No, I'll take it just like it is. Oh, and Mr. Simpson. Yeah. Um, before I go, would you mind terribly if I would? Walk through the apartment just once for the last time. You watch her as she strolls around the apartment, stopping now and then to dab the corner of her eye with a handkerchief. And then she's gone. An interesting performance, wasn't it, Harry? And you wonder just how much of a threat she's going to be. But you're not worried, are you? No. Because you've already planned your next move. Half an hour later, you register at a large downtown hotel. Hand an envelope containing the money to the desk clerk. Ask him to keep it in the office safe. 
Then you saunter back out into the street, take a taxi up to the strip to celebrate your good fortune and a bright future. It's almost four in the morning when you decide to return. You can pick up the money at the hotel tomorrow. You climb the stairs to your apartment. And then as you reach the first floor, you stop, leap back into an alcove as a man comes out of your apartment and hurries down the hall toward the back stairs. You get only a glimpse of his face as he hurries past you. But it's enough. Calder. That guy was Frank Calder. Alive. With the prologue of Bright Future, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. Inasmuch as what I want to talk with you about now is completely free, you might think that Signal wouldn't want me to take valuable radio time for it. But even when Signal Oil Company gives away something, such as their new roadmaps, they insist that it be the very finest obtainable. For you radio fans, for instance... Signal Roadmaps contain a radio log which shows where you can tune in your favorite network programs while you're traveling. In addition, each Signal Roadmap contains a mileage chart plus a guide to interesting places to visit. And while the maps themselves are large size for easy reading, they're accordion folded for convenient handling. So whether it's the tops in gasoline, lubricants, and automotive accessories that you're looking for, or just a free roadmap, remember this. You'll find them all at their best at those 2,000 friendly independent dealers throughout the Pacific Coast states who display the familiar circle sign in yellow and black that identifies signal service stations. And now, back to the whistler. didn't it, Harry? One swift, sudden moment of recognition and you discover a startling truth. That Frank Coulter, the man whose obituary in the newspaper led you to finding an apartment, is actually alive. You're a little stunned with a sudden turn of events, aren't you? And you struggle to fit the pieces of the puzzle together. $35,000 in a picture frame, hidden in the apartment of a man who has come back from the grave. Why did he hire an out-of-town private detective to check on the movement of a man named Jameson. Then there's Rosanna Robin, Coulter's girlfriend. She fits in here somewhere, doesn't she? But as far as she's concerned, you find out where you stand the following evening as you're about to go out. Yes, what the... Oh. <laughs> here I am again, Mr. Simpson. That's so I see. Oh, I hope you're not annoyed. Uh, there was something I wanted of Frank's. Beside the picture. Um, a cigarette lighter. Have you seen it? No. No, I haven't. Oh, well, it might have dropped on the floor behind a chair or something. May I come in? Well, sure. Help yourself, honey. Place is yours. <laughs> Thank you. I... Why are you looking at me like that, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that my gleam was showing. Uh, Mr. Simpson. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you don't think I'm going to find it, do you? The, the lighter, I mean. I bet you think I just made it all up just to have an excuse to come back. Well, honey, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think you do. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Stinson. Uh, Harry. You see, I, I'm a terrible person. Really, simply awful. I didn't love Frank. Well, I sort of noticed that your grief, uh, didn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. Actually, Frank Coulter meant very little to me. I suppose I loved only the idea of all that uh, money. You wouldn't know about that, would you, Harry? No. No, I wouldn't, honey. Oh. You know, I think we should talk things over. Oh, we are talking. <laughs> We're not really. Good. Well, relax. I'm sure of one another. 
Uh, we could be, Harry. Um, aren't you going to offer me a drink or something? Well, about the drink, I... Sorry, I just moved in. I haven't a thing. Oh, of course. Well, um, why don't we go over to my place then? Quiet and cozy. I have everything we'll need. Well, how can I refuse? Suppose I run on ahead. Meet you then an hour. Half an hour. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, start down the address for you, Harry, so you'll uh, be sure to get there. So there'll be no mistake. A few minutes after she's gone, you hurry down the corridor. As you reach the head of the stairs, you hear someone dialing the telephone down in the lobby. Slowly, you ease down the stairs. And then you hear Rosanna's voice. Hello? Uh, this is Miss Robbins. I'd like to speak with Mr. Jameson. Don Jameson. What? Oh, yes, I'm certain he's registered there. Yes? Oh, I see. No. No, I'll try again later. You're certain you can't be mistaken. You heard the name clearly enough, didn't you, Harry? Jameson. Coulter's ex-girlfriend phoned Don Jameson. The man Coulter was having watched by Detective Boyle. A few minutes later, after you hear the front door slam, you hurry to the phone book, find the address of the hotel where Boyle is staying... Half an hour later, you're facing him across his cramped hotel room. You see, uh, Frank had to go out of town, Mr. Boyle. Uh, Joe. Uh huh? But he's still interested in this fellow, James. <laughs> I had a hunch he would be. Yes, sir, always follow my hunches. A fellow in my line has to keep on his toes, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah. Frank told me he did a nice job for him, a very sweet job. Well, all part of the racket, you know. Nothing to it, really, for yeah. me my experience. Nothing to it. Uh, this, uh... This, this guy, Jameson, you, you've been tailing. Yeah. You know, Frank was wondering about a girl. Tall? Redhead? Yeah. Her uh, name's uh, Rosanna Robbins. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That dog would make a woman hater tear up his union card. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. She, uh... Has she been up there to see uh, Jameson? Oh, lots of times. Lots of times. What is this Jameson like? A oh, pretty ordinary citizen. Good reputation. Fairly well known around. He's even buying a house. Oh. Yeah, you think he intends to marry uh, the Robin Hood? Well, I'd say they had a very genuine interest in each other. You uh, know what I mean, Pat? Oh, yeah. Sure. See, uh, see, uh, tell me something, will you? Uh, this culture, he got sort of a yen for this dish, too, huh? That's why he was uh, telling Jameson? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's sort of a, a jealousy. Thing oh, oh I had a hunch that was it. Every time, I remember a case I had last summer. A fellow named uh, Jeff Bellamy. Oh, he's yeah. the, uh, he's the uh, local druggist up at Denton. Well, he got mixed up with a lady sax player from Chicago. You know, I say, brother... I, I'm awfully sorry to break this up, fella. Oh, you have to go. Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, look, I'm meeting a little doll downstairs in a, just a little while. You see him? I thought, well, she might have a friend. Oh, me. no, thanks. No, <laughs> no, no. No, I, uh, I got something on tap. <laughs> Yes, you have a date of your own, haven't you, Harry? A very important date with Rosanna at her apartment. As you had expected, it turns out to be quite an enjoyable evening. And strangely enough, not once does the $35,000 enter the conversation. Coulter seems to be forgotten. And you're beginning to think she's forgotten about Jameson, too. We're out of soda, Harry. Uh, water will do. You know, uh, baby... I've been thinking. I'm sort of turning things over in my mind. Harry, you sound too serious. Here's your drink. Ah, uh, thanks. No, it's it's nothing serious. Just a crazy notion I ran into. Oh? Mmm. I like this drink. But try it, Harry. Uh, let me get this out first. Uh, like I said, it's just the notion. There's a there's a man and a woman. Oh, uh, well, now that is a good notion. Uh, move over, will you? Uh, well. Uh, there's a there's a romantic interest between these two, but they're not quite happy. You see, the guy doesn't like his work. It's sort of dull. Maybe like he's a, a nauditor in a chemical plant. How very, very dull. Yeah, and it doesn't pay off very well. Drink your drink, Harry. Yeah, so he, he gets an idea. He does a little embezzling, gets together a nice hunk of cash, he hides it and knocks himself off. You fascinate me, Harry. Go on. Well, it's an accident, you see. Mm. Fire, maybe. There isn't a trace of the guy left to the world. He's dead. Isn't he? No, no. He's as alive as either of us. 
Now, he's free of his wife, and he... Oh, he's been married all along? Yeah, yeah, but they've been separated for years. Let's say the wife is out west, won't give him a divorce. Now, he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. He can marry the girl, take the dough, and skip. And they live happily ever after. Drink your drink, Cal. Oh, the story isn't over. The guy <laughs> misplaces the dough. Poor girl. I don't know. Maybe she didn't care much for the guy anyway. Maybe she was running around with another fella. Upstate somewhere. Oh, really? Well, uh, maybe this man has... What all? Maybe. Only the way I look at the picture... And you do like to look at pictures, huh? <laughs> uh, but you know something, baby? I figured that this doll would throw both of these boys over for someone else. Ah. Uh, who does she like now? Now or any time she likes whoever has the most to offer. Her dream boy is the gent with the folding stuff. You know, Harry... I think you're right. But with so much happening to our girl, how can she be sure she's getting the right man? That's for her to figure out. But she's smart enough. After she has time to think it over, it'll come to her. Uh, good night, baby. I got a show. So soon, Harry, wife. Uh, Harry? Yeah. That's only a sample. Uh. Now, give me a call when you make up your mind. You know the number. All right, Harry. Oh, uh, Rosanna. Yeah? That last drink of mine. You better pour it down the sink. You might take it by mistake. I wouldn't want that to happen. You've figured it all out, haven't you, Harry? The picture that was once vague in your mind has now been brought into focus. The pieces of the puzzle are falling into place. And the waiting game is over. It's time for action now. And you're not worried about Rosanna anymore. You're sure you know what the next move is going to be. And later that night in your apartment, you're ready for it. As the door buzzer rings and you open the door. Hello, Frank. That is the name, isn't it? Frank Colder. Mind if I come in, friend? No, no. Come ahead. I've been expecting you. Yeah? Look, Simpson... I don't know what you're trying to pull, but it breaks down right here, understand? Oh, you came for the dough, huh? Rosanna is wonderful, isn't she? I figured... We she... can skip, Rosanna. No, Calder. One of us will be a big man when we get through talking, but not quite big enough to skip Rosanna. She goes along with the deal. Winner take off. She doesn't really care who wins, either. Have it all figured out, huh? Including the fact that you probably brought a gun along. Ah, don't try that, pal. I'm not just keeping my hand warm. Looks like you've got me warm. So what happens now? Oh, you don't know? For a guy with a big fat imagination, you disappoint me, Calder. So I'll tell you what happens. You left yourself wide open, pal, the way you destroyed yourself in that fire. What do you mean? You're dead, Calder. You haven't any identity at all. Who's going to miss you? Hey, now, wait a minute. Makes it all very easy for me and Rosanna. I'm going to kill you, Frankie. I'm going to take you out of town somewhere and shoot you and get rid of the body. And I repeat, who's going to miss you? Now, look. Look, Simpson. Can't we make a deal? A like... deal? What do I look like, the leader of the bowl haircut crowd? I'm sorry. I'll take baby and the 35 grand. Come on, Cola. Let's go. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. If you Whistler fans who play contract bridge would like to have some fun with your friends, here's a suggestion. Ask them how they would bid each of the 75 examination hands, which are part of the six lessons in contract bridge that signal dealers are now giving free. Of course, to make sure that you know all the answers, you probably want to brush up on the lessons themselves, which are written by that outstanding bridge authority, Robert Lee Johnson, of whom Ely Culbertson says, no one is better qualified to prepare a series of lessons on contract bridge than Robert Lee Johnson. One feature makes these lessons especially valuable. While they are complete enough to offer an excellent review for the average player who would like to improve his game, they are at the same time so understandable 
that even those of you who have never played bridge before can learn the game in six lessons. Each week for the past several weeks, signal dealers have been receiving a different lesson in the series of six. And of course, they're free, no purchase required. So that you won't miss a single one of the set, I'd suggest that you hurry down to your nearest signal dealer tonight, or tomorrow, sure, and ask for six lessons in contract bridge. And now, back to the whistler. It doesn't take long, does it, Harry? You watch Coulter's body sink slowly in the mire of a swamp at the outskirts of town. You drop the gun you use in after him. Hurry back to your car for the drive to your apartment. A few hours later, going up the stairs... The whole thing runs through your mind again. Finding the apartment through the obituary. The money. Rosanna. Her devotion to men with money. She'll be yours now, won't she, Harry? Because you have the money and you're in the clear. Coulter is gone, a victim of his own plan. And no one will be searching for a dead man. You're smiling as you open the door and let yourself in. Hello, Harry. How are you, baby? I've been waiting for one of you to come back. I'm glad it's you, Harry. Yeah. He'd have probably said the same thing to Coulter if he'd have come back. <laughs> well, he isn't coming back. Oh, poor Frank. Look, baby, we're going to have to take off. This town isn't for us anymore. So? So, most important, what about Jameson? Jameson? You, you expecting someone? Relax, baby. I'll take care of it. Hiya, pal. Boyle. That's right. Joe Boyle. Boyle Investigations. Uh, this is Lieutenant Hanson. We come in, Simpson? The police? I don't understand. A lot of things we don't understand. Like why you let Boyle here believe that Frank Coulter was alive. Yeah, I just found out different. And another thing about this guy I've been following. Jameson? What about him? Well, since you asked me to stay with it, I never let him out of my sight for a minute. Not for a minute. So what? Look, Lieutenant, you're not mixing me up in that part of it. Uh, Take it easy, Rosanna. Look who's giving advice. Don't you know what they're trying to tell you, sap? Frank Coulter had to be somebody after he died in that fire. He's been living a double life for over a year. That's why he hired Boyle here to see if his new identity would stick. And it has. Uh, look, lady, I don't get that double talk about a double life. All I know is I saw Simpson shoot this guy a couple of hours ago. What guy? This guy. I've been carrying his picture around ever since I started tailing him. But that's a picture of Frank Coulter. How could I shoot Coulter? He died four days ago. Who's talking about Coulter? I'm talking about this guy in the picture, Don Jameson. Don Jameson. Like you asked me, pal. I've been following Jameson for you, that's all. That's how I happen to see you shoot him and toss him into the swamp. But that's Frank Coulter's picture. It doesn't make any difference what he called himself, Coulter or Jameson. They're the same guy. You killed him, so come on, let's go. That whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you, to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Frank Lovejoy and Betty Lou Gerson. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Robert Eisenbach and Jackson Gillis, and music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, at this same time next Wednesday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.